Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he did a couple people like that this year. But see, that ain't the problem. This is the problem. I never seen a man that has a wingspan like he have. Don't take the ball all the way to the hole. Why is you passing it? You damn it to the hole. He can stick his arm out and slam on the motherfucker. But he'll pass the ball or either. Well, he's, when he's trying to shoot a jumper, he got to think about it sometimes, man. I, I can't have that indecision, man. You got to be able to do it or want to do it or bring it to the house or whatever to, for me to be happy, man. You know, this shit... Coach should be a, but a coach should be able to coach that up, though, Chief. But we ain't got no coach, man. That's why we're Exactly. That's what, that's exactly. Why, yeah, that's why Mark Jackson will be there next year, man. You know, I got a little confirming on that. It's between him and somebody else, but uh, it's mostly leaning towards him. Mark Jackson, mother, got a campaign going uh, for all the fans to to put in uh, the blobs and everything. Bring Mark to New York. So uh, we may see Mark Jackson coaching the Knicks next year, man. That'll be what's up, man. Definitely that. Dude, Mark Jackson, it, Mark Jackson would be the guy to turn that to turn that around. Right, right. See, down this is show Golden State that. They lost a good man as far as coaching. And, and, and another thing, and another thing I say, uh, as much as Dolan fuck shit up, Chief, New York would not let him build up the Knicks and not uh, see them over the hump like like they did him in Golden State. New York wouldn't allow Dolan to do that. Right, right. You know, remember, remember everybody been talking about Mark Jackson and what I've been telling y'all the past couple of years, Jackson wants to come back and coach because he don't want to be in the same position that he was before right. and where he gets shitted on when he gets a team, you know, from nothing to something, and then they say, okay, well, we're going to bring somebody else to get him over the hump. Now, New York is different because right. he's a legend in New York. So New York, for as long as he can do what he did in Golden State there, they're right. not going to allow him to do – they're not going to allow uh, Dolan to do them the, the way go that they did. Not to mention, oh. if they want to keep Chris, if they want to keep Chris. I spoke to Chris Brother uh, maybe like three weeks ago. Right. I spoke to Chris Brother. Uh -huh. If they want to keep Chris, they got to bring Mark Jackson over. Right. They yeah. have to bring Mark Jackson over. Doc Rivers is, it wouldn't even uh, get uh, keep Chris there. No. Um, you know, one thing about um, um, Mark Jackson and Dolan, um, Dolan really likes Mark, man. And you know what? Dolan gives a coach a chance. Cause look at how he gave Phil Jackson and that bullshit that they had out there coaching chances to coach their team. So uh, you figure, man, Mark come. He know that. See, Dolan's about the money. He about the fans being in them seats. Once the fans talk talking about if you don't do this or do that, we're not coming to the game. He care about them seats. That's what he care exactly, about. Exactly, which is why which is why he had to backtrack on the opening thing. Right, right. Yeah, he did. Because he the fans played. wasn't having it. Oh yeah, they was they was definitely and see now Oakley playing hardball with him, man. Oakley told that motherfucker, nah, I I I'll, I'll wait. If I want to come back, I'll come back. But I'm not coming back all of a sudden just because you want to apologize to me, nah. But you kind of embarrassed me on national TV, so it got to be more than apology. Oakley trying to get something out of this shit. Oh, you, you know? know it. And I don't blame you. Know him. It. I, I seen. I this don't shit, either. Man. I seen this shit happen because I was like, oh shit, that go oh. I said, damn, what they doing to Oakley? They trying to roughhouse him. Man, he put both of them guards down, man. <laughs> before, the shit got, before the shit got critical and they got their balance and they was able to, you know, wrestle him. But, uh, hey, man, Oakley is strong, man. Fuck you, man. You yeah, that's a big dude, too, man. And, Oakley, one of them dudes like Jim Brown. Like, it don't matter how old he gets, you just always going to be scared of him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Uh, let me see. Slugger said, NBA has the same... Uh, wrench and repeat formula hair and ninjas do <laughs> hair and ninja do the heavy lifting then bring in a good old boy to take all the credit that's uh he talking about that Steve Nash thing you know what I'm saying we do all the heavy lifting and then you bring but see one thing about I like if uh, they bring him in he started with a young team and you see how he taught um, Steph how to handle that ball how to do what he do best and shit. That's for real. Thank you for coming in, JY3. JY3 is up in the house, my brother. Yeah, man, but um, that'll be a big move, Microwave. Definitely that, man, and and I'm loving it, man. But, you know, I came on the Sports & More show yesterday after you got off, right, before they closed the doors and shit, you know. I was like that last call for Celebrity Hall, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, I came in because I was kind of, 
you know, I was kind of buffled about what y'all was talking about as far as this football thing, you know. Uh, you what part of it? Oh, well, you said the Rams uh, is scary and, and they look good, but, you know, Vince kept pushing it up about your team repeat and, and y'all just dominating shit, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I felt kind of, you know, I, can't, I felt some, I felt something bad about that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Because well, what I say, you ain't say nothing. You ain't say nothing. You ain't bragging about it. You, 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 you know, you was microwave on it yesterday and whatnot. But I just felt that way because how Vince was talking. So you know, I had to come in and put my two cents in and whatnot. You know, I said as long as Philly is in the NFC East, that shit ain't gonna be no easy ride. I said just remember the first game we played. Y'all was a, a a kick almost being missed from going into overtime with us, you know what I'm saying? So, and this is with your starting quarterback. We, and we almost you, lost the Was- we the, that Washington game was close too. Our defense won that game. Our defense carried us majority of the year. Like right. you got you know Carson Wentz. A lot of these plays that he made, you know, you look you look at him on Sports Center and you're like, oh look, what an amazing play. I'm looking at it live. And I'm looking at the replays, and I'm looking at it again and again, and I'm like, well, damn, ain't nobody open. Right. Do you know right. what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> I'm like, right. yo, can't nobody get open off of their of they normal routes. So he got to escape a sack, and everybody think the play is over, and now somebody's running wide open. So, you know, but as the season progressed, uh, Doug Peterson did a good job with, with the play calling, I felt like, and, and, and the team just grew more confident and confident, and that defense knew – that they want nothing to be fucked with, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the game, it was it was always a game. It was always how many games we we won because the defense made a hold at the end of the game. It was unbelievable because normally, Chiefs, Philly is used to losing games at the end because the defense right. don't hold. And that's been our philosophy for the past shit fifteen years. Right. Our right. defense couldn't our defense couldn't hold when we needed to hold somebody from uh, to do it, uh, and our offense whenever we needed to score couldn't get it done. And right. both things happened in the, in the same season. So that's pretty much what happened. And then even with all the injuries and, 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 and man, we got, we had a lot of luck on our side. And, and, and man, in every championship run, you got to have some bit of luck. So, yeah. hey, man, I, I can't just sit here and be like, oh, yeah, well, the Eagles going to repeat. I would like us to, but that's a hard thing to do in this league here, man. And you look at what the Rams did, man, like, them boys ain't playing. Them boys ain't well, playing, so well, it ain't necessarily to say that, you know, I mean, at any, at any given Sunday, you, you look at, hey, look, Julio Jones, if he's Antonio Brown, we lose to the Falcons because he makes that catch. Right, right, right. Yeah, they got to they gotta, they gotta do something about Julio because Julio missed a lot of passes. But tell me, you know, I'm, I'm, you know what you know what I'm kind of mad about right now? Now, Rough Buff, What's right? That? Rough Buff. Somebody uh-huh. asked Rough Buff, who's his basketball team? He said the Knicks. But here goes Mark, Buff. Mark Jackson caught lightning in the bottle at Golden State, right? How he caught lightning in the bottle when they was sorry as hell when he took over, right? He got him better. He got him better, Ruff. And then he said Knicks won't be that lucky. First and foremost, Ruff, we made luck up and get the motherfucking ball like we did when Patrick Hume was coming out, the number one ping pong, right? And so then we can get whoever we want, you know? And then for two... Being that we in the draft and we got a couple of draft choices and we got some young talent and we get the right coach, we be good, man. They just ain't had no leadership, man. They had no damn coach, man. You know what I'm saying? But fuck that, man. Yeah, he didn't. Mark Jackson didn't catch lightning in the bottle in Golden State. I'd, I'd be more likely to say he put the lightning in the bottle. He he drafted that team. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he, he hey, you know he. You got Clay Thompson, you got Draymond Green, and they make the move for uh for Iguodala. You know they had Jerry West over there, you know making moves. And Jerry West, when they wanted to trade uh Kevin Love for for Clay Thompson, straight up says no over my dead body. Like so, it you know it wasn't necessarily catching lightning in the bottle. And then Mark Jackson was the one that came out and gave those boys confidence in all each other. You know what I'm saying? Draymond Green had a chip on his shoulder because of how far he fell in the draft, and them saying he wasn't an NBA player, and and and. Clay Thompson wasn't heralded coming out of college, even though his father was the former number one overall pick in the in, in the NBA draft to Portland. Uh, so you know, you, and, and Steph Curry, you know, wasn't highly talented, and then he you know, got all of these ankle problems. And then Mark Jackson says, "What?" He says, "This is the best backcourt in NBA history." And then he nicknamed them the Splash Brothers. 
Oh, and from hey, the hey. moment he said that, uh-huh. they took off. Hey, uh, B. Hill said who he only had four drops the whole season. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying. Hey. Technically, technically, that one in the in the playoffs against the Eagles wasn't a drop. It just went through his hands, so they don't count that as a drop. No, but it, it doesn't matter. He only had four drops. I know one of them drops would have been a game winner against Carolina, but instead he dropped it, fell on his face, and they lost the game. Wow, wow! I don't believe you, BL. You bigger than that, BL. Stop. Yeah, you're bigger than that, man. Don't get mad. Cause, yeah, y'all, y'all know how I criticize, uh, as much as I criticize Torrey Smith about all his drops last season. Like, Ooh, look, man, you a wide receiver. If you drop the football, I'm going to call you out about it. Yeah, he had a lot of drops. You know, uh, man, you, you, yeah, he had a lot of drops, man. He definitely had a lot of drops, man. But, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that my receiver went to camp. You know what I'm saying? Even though he ain't doing no work. You know, he just go in there to get massages and, you know, do a little uh, calisthenics and stuff like that. But I'm glad he's in camp, man, because the more he in camp, the more that looks good when the owner give him that contract. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree, Chief. Well, I, you know what that was? You know how uh, uh, when them, when them debt collectors call you and stuff and one of them finally, you know, maybe you're like, you know what, I'll go ahead and start taking care of this. And what they call it, that's one of them that's one of them good faith payments. You right. know what I'm saying? That's what Odell did. It's like, okay, look, I still I still believe he's not gonna step on that field without a deal. But just to show that I'm not gonna be hostile, I'm gonna show up to OTAs, I'm gonna do what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? But he may just say, I'm not gonna play in the preseason. Yeah, and you, you know, know what I'm saying? What? He 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 may go ahead. He may go ahead and play and play out the season. You know. Uh, you know. I, I don't know what he's doing because because he's making his money off the field. You know what I'm saying? He's right. making his money off the field. So maybe maybe someone talked to him and said, "Okay, well, look, Odell. Right now, you don't got the leverage because of the video and all of that stuff. Just come out there, make your money off the field. You know what I'm saying? Play play for you know whatever. Play for whatever your your your, your salary is this year, and then next year they'll pay you." You know, or maybe somewhere, maybe halfway through the year. You know, uh, the Eagles, we 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 paid out Sean Jeffrey like week ten. We signed him for four years. You know what I'm saying? Because before the season, we we just gave him, or he was on the last year of his contract, so it was just like you know, all right, it was a one year show me deal. So then, okay, we saw enough and we paid him. Right, right. Um, I, but you know, it definitely was big for him showing up, man. It de- right. Especially for the locker room. And who was saying this the last couple of weeks, man? You know what I'm saying? Who was saying this? Um, oh, uh, Angry Black. Who was? Who was, you ain't answered the question, Mike. What? Who was saying this for the last two weeks that he gonna show up? Huh? You don't, you don't know who said you, this? You said you said he was gonna show up. <laughs> hey, listen. Angry Black man said if OBJ get hurt um, being in camp, he won't get a new contract. He's giving up his leverage he had, but he's not doing nothing. Um, Angry Black man. He's just going to get treatment, and he gonna look at the new offensive scheme. And stay by the coach, and he gonna be an inspiration to the other player. And you know who else going? Yeah, to he's camp? just in the building. You know who else going to camp? Olivia Vernon. He wasn't there last year either. A lot of people that wasn't there last year are coming this year because they want to get this thing on the right page. They want to get this thing going. They know that they blew last year for supposed to be having a good season, and they blew it and whatnot. We got bust the bust in the house. The diplomat from a uh, Washington D.C. and also staying down there at OKC Heartbreak Hotel. Uh, Buster's our um, our third leg when we start that show back. You know that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely that, man. We, we got to bring the NFC East segment back. Oh yeah, and then we yeah. got to get Truck D. We got to get Truck D in the fold. Yeah, where, where Truck D been, man? I ain't seen Truck, truck D, D working, man. Oh, he truck working? D working. Oh, so you trying yeah. to say you trying to say he wasn't working before? Nah, he, he been working, but you know. Truck D just, you know, he, he doing his thing. I had to bring him out of the, uh, I had to bring him out of the woodshed just to, uh, to do that one little bracket challenge. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, Black man saying uh, inspiration to his teammates. Question mark? Question mark? Chief, you believe in the Easter Bunny too? <laughs> oh man. Oh man. No, black man. He is man. 
I mean, if you ask anybody, see, that's why I hate when people talk about my team, don't know about my team. You ask anybody.